Hello, my name is Gerald Lewis. I'm a general physician and a cardiologist working in New Zealand, and this is another of my talks of medicine on the web. Today's talk is why we need probiotics, and it's important for us to understand what's going on inside our intestine. It's interesting, in the 1800s, doctors looked at stools and studied these in great detail. Now in medicine, we almost totally ignore the bowel and the bowel motions of our patients, and I think we do that to the detriment of our patients and certainly to our own health as well. When we absorb food into our bodies, it's got to be broken down so it can pass through these tiny little projections called microvilli inside our small intestine. It's got to pass across those walls into the bloodstream and into our body. First of all, we munch up our food with our teeth, which is why it's important to chew so well. Then we've got enzymes in our saliva, our stomach, pancreas, juices, and bile, which help break down the food. But the majority of digestion and breakdown, in fact, occurs due to bacteria in the small and the large bowel. And the bacteria break down complex fats into simple fats, triglycerides and simple fats, complex sugars into simple sugars, and proteins, which are the building blocks of our body, start like this. They break down, first of all, into a string of beads called amino acids, and then most of them are then broken down into individual amino acids, or just two or three in a row, before they're absorbed into our bodies. When we're born, the baby's gut is totally sterile, and mother's breast milk inoculates the baby with good bacteria and yeasts, which coat the inside of the bowel. And these bacteria help with digestion, and they also keep bad bugs at bay. Now, our small intestine contains trillions of bacteria. It's been calculated, I have no idea how, that we have more bacteria in our gut than the total number of people who have ever lived on the planet Earth throughout entire history. A very useful piece of information. We've got good bacteria. And these keep the bowel clean, they help break down food, they make some B vitamins and the K vitamins, and they also suppress the bad bacteria, which spend their lifetime damaging the gut walls, creating infections, putrefaction, inflammation, flatulence, bad breath and stop absorption. Very nasty little fellows. Just to realise how important these good bacteria are, if you give antibiotics to a cow, you'll kill off many of the good bacteria. And if they're not replaced, the cow cannot break down grass food, this cow starves and in actual fact dies. And most farmers give their animals good bacteria probiotics after they've had a course of antibiotics. Some people wonder why we have an appendix. Is it a design fault? And the answer is it most definitely is not. The appendix is a reservoir of good bacteria and it's protected from diarrhea and antibiotics so that at the end of the course of antibiotics or diarrhea, all the good bacteria sitting down there in the appendix can zoom up and recolonize the bowel. Good bowel health is when you've got about 85% good and less than 15% bad bacteria. If you give antibiotics, it'll basically kill all bacteria, both the good and the bad. And after the antibiotics, the bacteria grow back and usually more than 15% of the bad come back again. And antibiotics aren't just simply in the pills we take for an infection, but they're in our food, chicken, fish, meat, eggs, milk. All those animals given antibiotics. And also chemicals and sprays, anything that kills bacteria. If that gets into our bowel, that can damage our good bacteria as well. Bad bacteria cause quite literally disease. E. coli, salmonella, clostridia, staphylococcus are present in most people's bowels, but they're usually kept under control by the good bacteria. If they're allowed to grow unrestricted, they cause all sorts of problems. Diarrhea, urinary infection, typhoid, gastroenteritis. There's a rather nasty condition called C. difficile that happens in hospital patients with clostridia after antibiotics, and staph gastroenteritis is something that nobody would want even their worst enemy to take. And bad bacteria do a number of things, which we'll go through one at a time. First of all, they create mold and putrefaction and release toxins. This causes diarrhea, bloating, bad breath, toxic feelings, liver overload. These toxins are absorbed into the body and our liver's got to overcome those. Depression, brain fog. Food is not absorbed, so you get malnutrition, particularly of the vitamins, diarrhea, weight loss, lack of energy. Parasites can thrive, causing yeast infections throughout the entire body. Toxic bacteria cause toxins, and they cause urinary and vaginal infections as well. And finally, the bad bacteria attack the gut lining, and this is probably the most dangerous of all because it causes something called leaky gut. Now, leaky gut is not like that. In fact, it's leaking on the inside. Large proteins can enter the bloodstream through the holes made by these bad bacteria. Now, when we were babies, we learned what was good and what was bad. Proteins entering the gut were broken down from big proteins into small amino acids. And as they passed through the gut, our immune cells would identify them. So there's a protein there. We've got immune cells sitting there called the payas patches, and the bacteria 
broke down the amino acid, the, prote the proteins into amino acids. They passed through the Payas patches, which had a look at these, saw these, and saw, yes, they're good. So our body said, these are okay. If they ever see those again, we'll ignore them. But if some new protein appears in the bloodstream, our immune system will attack it. That's the way the system says to be. That's a bacteria on the left and a virus on the right. Our immune system sees these. This is a new protein, and it basically destroys us. And this is how we stay healthy, and this is how our immune system works. But if the immune system goes wrong, it can cause immune diseases, asthma, eczema, lupus, diabetes, Crohn's, rheumatoid arthritis, ulcerative colitis, and all of the others. And leaky gut is a major cause of these. Leaky gut allows larger proteins to get through the gut wall. Our body doesn't recognize these. And if that protein is similar to one of our body tissues, for example, our joints or our lungs, our immune system attacks that tissue. So it can attack our lungs, and that causes asthma. It can attack our, our joints, and that causes rheumatoid arthritis. Immune disease can, in fact, be created or made a great deal worse by a leaky gut. So bad bacteria cause major problems, and the best answer is to replace the bad bacteria with good bacteria and cleanse the bowel. And the only way to do that is to take probiotics. Probiotics basically mean for life. There are healthy bacteria similar to those found in breastfed infants. Most of the good bacteria uh, come from the species Lactobacillus or Bifidobacterium, and they're found in some foods, yogurt, fermented and unfermented milk if it hasn't been pasteurized, miso, tempeh, some juices and soy beverages. And many people take dietary supplements, capsules, tablets or powders of probiotics. In addition to probiotics, it's important to take prebiotics, which aren't bacteria, but basically they're food that the bacteria, the probiotics can feed on. Undigestible foods, usually soluble fiber found in fruit, vegetables, and nuts. So who needs probiotics? And I'll go through this quite quickly. You can always slow the slide down if you want to. When any bowel bacteria are causing symptoms, such as people with diarrhea, bloating, fatulence, irritable bowel syndrome, when you've been under or been ill or under stress during and after a course of antibiotics after an overseas trip or while you're traveling, if you've got acute gastroenteritis, and other conditions which people should really be considering taking probiotics for. People with Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, other immune diseases after bowel surgery, urinary and vaginal infections, people who've got food allergies, eczema, particularly in children, and old people, people in hospitals, nursing homes, and people with immune system problems. Those people must be taking probiotics. Now, a whole lot of questions, which once again, it'll be fairly rapid fire. Slow down the slides if you want to. When should you take it? It really depends on the preparation. Some take it with food, some take it afterwards. Read the label. Side effects, usually a very few. Less than 1% of people have any side effects at all. And we're talking about bloating. If that happens, simply stop it and restart it at a lower dose. Can pregnant women take it? Absolutely yes. Can children take them? Absolutely yes. How fast will you see a change? Some get benefit in just a couple of days. Others make one or two weeks, maybe even longer before the benefit happens. Can you take it without antibiotics? Absolutely, yes. Can you overdose them? No, you can't. How long should I take them for? And the answer is usually two or three weeks or until the symptoms go away. You need to take How often should you take it? It depends entirely on your situation. Some people suggest that everybody should have a burst every few months. Can you do more than just simply take probiotics? Because it's quite hard to change the bowel flora and keep it changed. Number one is to make sure you're taking top quality probiotics. Number two is to take regular yogurt and miso to keep them topped up. Reduce the amount of high sugar, highly processed food in the diet, which basically feeds the bad bacteria. And read regular, eat regular prebiotics, soluble fiber, to feed the probiotics. Are they all the same? The answer is no, they're not. Different strains of bacteria are more effective. First of all, they've got to get through the bowel. So they've got to go through the stomach, duodenum, before they get into the bowel. So they've got to survive the acid stomach juices, the bile acids, and the pancreatic juices. So you need probiotics that are acid, bile, and pancreatic juice tolerant, which is not very easy to do. Some people coat each bacteria with a gel matrix. Others use enteric coated capsules that basically don't dissolve until they're passed through the pancreatic juices. Now, a good probiotic could make a huge difference to our health. I believe we should be taking a short course of probiotics regularly. Everybody, every four to six months, should be taking a course of probiotics. When you travel overseas, particularly if the food is somewhat debatable, take probiotics 
everybody who has a course of antibiotics, whether it's oral or intravenous, should be on probiotics while they're having it and when they're finished. Anybody with any bowel disturbance, people with allergies, immune diseases, inflammatory bowel disease, it can make an enormous difference to people with Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. People with thrush and other infections, once again, probiotics are beneficial. So take a short course of probiotics every few months, but make sure you choose a good brand. Eat plenty of soluble fiber, providing prebiotics, and take regular yogurt and miso to keep topping up the benefits of the probiotics. Do that, and your body will thank you very much for it. Thank you for listening. If you've got any questions, that's my email address down the bottom, and other talks you can find on my website, drgerald.co.nz. Thank you for listening.